So we learned that a function is an equation where x and y pair together. And a true function means that every x creates only one y, or every input creates only one output. Now how can we tell if something is a linear function and how do we make it so? So linear functions are functions whose when you plot their x and y values on a grid or a coordinate plane, it creates a straight line when you connect those points together. So let's just start with this function example. The function of x equals 2x plus 1. And what I need to do is start plugging in values for x to then solve for the function of x, or the correspondence of x, or just in simple terms, the y. So if I say that x is going to be 1, well, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So we want positives. We also want a 0 for the x. So 0, x is 0, that goes away, and we're just left with 1. And then we also want to explore the negative sides. If you're having to create your own table of values, it's good to have maybe about five numbers. It gives you enough points to plot to really establish what your line looks like. All right, and then so if I have a 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2 plus 1. It's going to be negative 1. Now I want to examine, do I notice a pattern in any way? Okay, so as each one of my numbers, I'm basically increasing by one. If I start off at negative one, zero, one, two, there's a pattern where I'm increasing by one and increasing by one. And here, to get from three to five, I increased by two. To get from one to three, I had increased by two. This would have been better if I had gone in numerical order, sorry. Uh, but I'm seeing that Everything on the x side is increasing by 1. Everything on the y side is increasing by 2. There's a pattern to that. So let's plot these points out and see what it's going to look like. So I have a very simple grid here. So I have the coordinate 1 and 3. That means I go to 1 on my x and 3 on my y and put a dot there. I have 2 for x and 5 for y. I have a 0 for x and a 1 for y, and a negative 1 for x, and a negative 1 for y. Look what happens when I plot that. I have a straight line. So this function is a linear function. Now the way we get a linear function has to do with this pattern. This pattern is called the slope. A slope equals a constant rate of change. I move up and over or down and back or any direction at a, a the exact same rate each time. So if I put these in order, um, oh, and slope is, you might be used to hearing it as the rise over the run. So the change in y over the change in x. Well, my change in y was 2. My change in x was 1. So I have 2 over 1. What's 2 over 1 simplified to? 2, right? Oh, wait. What's that right there? That's a, that's a 2. Is that a coincidence? No. Equations written like this are in linear function form or the slope intercept form where we're actually told some very important facts just by looking at that, the numbers plugged into our, that are present in our function without really even having to plot x and y values. So to know if you have a linear function, it needs to be written in what I call slope-intercept form. Okay. So, and again, the only way you can create a straight line is if you have a slope, that it is a constant rate of change every time. It's not necessarily that it's a pattern. It's the same exact value each time. So, what we have here, this is representing y. This is our output our answer. The, the value, the, ter the x term comes before the non-x term. This 
is our slope. So the number in front of x tells you how much you're going up and down and then forward or back each time without having to do any calculations and find that slope on your own. Then we have the x, which is the input. Now the output and input always have to just stay empty x and y. We don't put in a value for them in our actual function because we need to have the availability, the ability to you know, plug in different numbers and get, um, get results, get output, get solutions. Uh, so we don't ever put a fixed number into our equation for the x and y values. We leave those as constant variables. And then the y, or the last number here, is called the y-intercept. The y-intercept tells me on my graph where my line crosses through the y-axis. So the line up and down, this, this vertical line is my y-axis. and the slope intercept form lets me know where my line crosses through this axis and then where I go from there. Well, if I have a slope of two, that means from this y intercept, I go up two over one, up two over one, up two over one. And this pattern continues on indefinitely. There's no end to what this can be. So generally we just draw arrows to show it just keeps going. I don't want to write all the possible solutions. But we can also do this backwards. So if I have a 2 over 1, and when we write the number, we know there's a 1 there, so we don't actually write it in general. It's, it's assumed to be there. We just simplify it. So if I have a double positive, what also means the same thing? A double negative. So that means I can go down to back 1, down two, back one, down two, back one. So this lets me extend my line in both directions and make sure that I'm doing right. So a double positive means a double negative, okay? Um, if that would happen to be reversed, say I have a negative two thirds. So we put the negative on the fraction that gives me the flexibility of either having the top number be negative and the bottom positive, or the top positive and the bottom negative. So that if I was to plot this out, well, we'll just go ahead and use the same slope intercept. Actually, I'll make up another function. The function of x equals negative 2 thirds x. Um, let's go with 3. Okay, so this says. All right, I have to start up at one, two, three on my y axis, and then where do I go from there? Well, I can go down two, forward three, one, two, and then forward three, one, two, three, and put a dot, or I can go up two and back three, one, two, one, two, three, and put a dot there, but guess what? It's all a part of the same line. So that's why we put the negative here. Only one of these numbers is negative at a time and the other is positive. And by switching it, it lets you go both directions on your coordinate plane. Um, so, but back up to this. So output, slope, input, y intercept. This is more generally, so this is the slope intercept form because it has, gives you your slope and your intercept. This is the, the standard format we call y equals mx plus b. And again, output, slope, input, y, y intercept. And the part about the y intercept, y intercepts always involve x has to be zero. In order to get on that y axis, x has to be zero. And then y is whatever the number is. But you always want to make sure an intercept is an ordered pair with x being 0 and y being whatever. So this is kind of the foundations to linear functions. If you can rewrite the equation in slope intercept form, it means when you plug in an input, you get an output that's going to be a constant rate of change and create a straight line when you graph it.